Um, thanks for, for tuning into our session here today, um, where we will basically be, be covering uh, how we work with, with D5 at, at, at BIG and, and, um, and how we've, we've found it to become a, a super interesting, uh, uh, interesting tool in, in our workflows um, uh, here at BIG. Super quickly about myself, my name is Jens Karlsson. I'm the Director of Design Technology uh, here at BIG. Um, I'm based in Copenhagen. Hence, uh, my, my screen is a little bit dark right now. It's uh, almost midnight uh, here at the moment. Um, I've been with BIG for six and a half years, uh, and I'm overseeing the Copenhagen office, but also the, uh, the global uh, tech stack and the DT side of, of things. Um, together with me today, I also have Jeffrey uh, Espinosa, who's the uh, customer success manager for D5 Render. Um, and Jeffrey was was brought in very last minute and, and to a degree myself as well, because uh, it was actually a colleague of mine who, who uh, was supposed to do this talk and, and run the show and, and do pretty much everything. So uh, I, I managed to get Jeffrey in to, to help me do a little bit of live, live demoing um, uh, that he will he will show you guys later. So uh, so that's really great. So thank you, uh, Jeff, for, for jumping in last minute. Super quickly about uh, the office uh, and, and who we are. We have uh, six offices uh, all over the all over the world. Um, four core disciplines uh, being landscape engineering, architecture, and products. Um, and we actually have uh, this slide. I just realized is is a little bit outdated because we just had a partner promotion round uh, recently. So I think we're in the order of of twenty six partners by now, and we're getting close to eight hundred uh, employees. And we're um, co-founded or kind of co-founded, were founded by by uh, Bjarke Ingels himself, uh, who's still the uh, the creative mastermind behind everything we do. Uh, he's still in on pretty much all projects and 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 has uh, the last say in in, in yeah most uh, most projects and, and and things we do. And at Big, we have this uh, approach we quite often referred to as, as our LEAP concept, which is basically uh, that we have landscape, engineering, architecture, products, and planning in-house. Um, obviously, with architecture being the, the predominant or the main uh, main service. Uh, but we like to sort of say, so we have, uh, we, we do everything from small lamps to uh, pavil pavilions to um, floating, floating student housing uh, in, in Copenhagen. We've done big office buildings in New York, uh, headquarters for Google, um, master, uh, sorry, uh, master plans, uh, the size of a city. We're also doing uh, master plans uh, almost at a country scale. Um, and we've also recently been, been uh, doing this plan for the planet, um, which is uh, something I would definitely encourage you guys to uh, to go and check out on, on YouTube. If you uh, Google or YouTube uh, plan for the planet and then Bjarke Ingels, uh, there should be some some very interesting TED Talks with some quite bold ideas on how we could save the planet. But but uh, some of it, I think, will will really uh, resonate once you once you uh, listen to it. So, so definitely uh, go and check that out. Very briefly, uh, just a quick look at some of our projects. Um, uh, and, and I think what, what this sort of slide here shows is, is really the, the sort of complexity we work with and also how in how many places we have already uh, completed and built projects. We have uh, we've not built in every single continent yet, but we're getting quite close, I think. Um, and we will get more back to this uh, biosphere here in Sweden uh, in a little bit. Um, Here's also a, another handful of projects. Uh, I'm sure you will notice some of them. There's the famous ski slope on top of a waste to energy plant in, in Copenhagen that we completed a few years ago and, and a handful of, of other um, projects. And lastly, uh, I also just uh, like to show this slide when, when I present about BIG because this is uh, this is really the uh, the mantra we have um, or and still have with it's it's something we came up with um 15 years ago um which is this yes is more um attitude or mantra that that we have to remain positive about uh, obstacles and, and see obstacles more as challenges and, and 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 really sort of make sure that we we you know take on our yes hat when we uh, when we go to the office in the morning um so for the for the talk today, um, I'll start out by doing an intro to uh, to our design technology department at, at Big and and how we're structured. Um, 
and then uh, I'll, I'll hand it over to, to Jeff to show a little bit on, on how we use D5. Uh, and Jeff has been, been instrumental in, in helping us uh, getting going at BIG. So he's, he's familiar with how we work and, and our workflows, um, even though he's from D5, but, but, uh, but he's familiar with our setup. Um, then I'll come back to how we use AI a bit, because I think AI is especially interesting in, in, the, in, in relation to D5, because D5 is, is not only just a re real-time rendering engine, but it's also uh, having a lot of AI capabilities on top of it. So, so, um, so I'll touch upon how we, uh, how we use AI at, at BIG. Um, and then I'll hand over to Jeff again to show some some of the uh, more AI related uh, features as well. Um, and then at the end, I will I will just uh, come back and conclude on with some some final thoughts and, and so on. So that's the aim for today. Um, so yeah, let me first jump into the design technology section um, because essentially a couple of years back we uh, we decided to basically take a lot of these sub-disciplines uh, within uh, an architectural practice, uh, being BIM, it's like the tech-related ones, uh, being BIM, computational design, visualization, for that matter, VR and XR as well, uh, simulation, fabrication, and, and AI. We, we sort of took all of that and put it under the same umbrella, uh, which we now refer to as, as big design technology or just big DT. Um, and obviously, being in, in 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 the DT team means that that it's it's a lot of support work. It's a lot about uh, you know helping uh, our colleagues getting going. Uh, it's also a lot about you know training and 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 you know optimizing workflows and, and and so forth. But a lot of it, and especially for someone like me, is also about navigating the this sort of ever expanding digital ecosystem of of tools that we work with. Uh, this slide here is a little bit old um, and outdated. Um, so we're not using everything you see here, but there's also some tools that we're now using that is not here. And also all the AI tools that we're using has not been added into this slide because then there would almost be uh, a mirage of, of bubbles all over the place. So so um, so that's intentional, but, but I think it's just more to paint the picture of how complex this, you could say landscape of, of software is becoming. Um, Last year at AU, I was I was uh, doing a talk on on BIM. So in case you're uh, you could say curious about how we were set up around BIM, you can go and check out the uh, the talk I did last year um, on 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 the whole BIM side of things at Big. Um, but today we will focus on on this, and then as as mentioned before, a little bit on AI as well, but but predominantly this, and 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 more more or less primarily about uh, how how we use D five. Um, because I've now, uh, as you can see, slotted D5 into the ecosystem here, and, and it, it sort of sits nicely next to Enscape, uh, V-Ray, Twinmotion, and the likes down in the, uh, in the visualization uh, corner of this, of this uh, map here. Um, and it's really something that we only discovered recently. So it's, it's, it's a tool that we, that we, uh, that we started buying into, uh, you know, less than a year ago. So it's still somewhat new, and and that's also part of 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 again, you know, con constantly uh, sort of uh, re researching and 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 checking out new tools and things. That's when we sometimes discover these either small gems or small things here and there, and then all of a sudden we realize, oh, there's something here, uh, which was the case with with D five in our case. Uh, I will quickly add that that Enscape is still the predominant real time tool we use at Big uh, for for the more day to day daily uh, quick and dirty um, uh, visuals etc. But I'll come back to why I think uh, you know both Enscape and D five actually complements each other uh, quite well and and how we see a good fit for for both of them in in our toolkit at the moment. Um, but I think to start with, I think if, if we're talking visuals at big in, in general and, and renders, uh, we we obviously go a long way back with uh, with V-Ray. That was sort of our first primary visualization tool uh, 15 years ago. Uh, it was sort of the, the main thing we would do. We would work in Rhino and, and pretty much only in Rhino, AutoCAD and Rhino, and then we would render in V-Ray. Um, here's just a very, very recent image uh, from a project we're doing in Bhutan where we're uh, designing this beautiful uh, master plan of a, an, an entire mindfulness, mindfulness city in, in Bhutan. Um, 
which is a project I would definitely encourage you to, to check out on, on our website. It's, it's an absolutely stunning project. Um, so this is an image done by, by, by V-Ray, traditional V-Ray uh, Photoshopping. What's interesting with this image is that actually a lot of the cutout people in this scene has been AI generated, uh, which is um, quite nice, I think. Um, so we're still doing a lot of V-Ray, classical, in-house. Uh, also, obviously, we also put a lot of Im images externally, but we, we still do a fair amount of, of V-Ray uh, images. This one is also uh, done in V-Ray, again, using a lot of AI cutout people, um, but but uh, again, completely done in-house with with uh, more traditional 3ds Max V-Ray uh, V -ray, um, style um, workflows. Uh, this one is, by the way, from a project we had in Prague for, for this new Philharmonic Hall in, in Prague that we're doing. Um, then on to uh, how things then expanded, because then around, you know, I think Enscape came out around, what was it, 15, 16-ish. Uh, and, and I initially, when I used to work at Foster's for a couple of years, uh, I initially helped bring Enscape into Foster's um, and, and then... Uh, as I moved from Foster's to Big, I, I, I sort of took Enscape with me, or, not, uh, or at least I, I, I told Big that we definitely needed to get Enscape up and running immediately uh, back then. So I've, I've been playing a big part of, of, of why Big is using Enscape. Um, so we've been using Enscape for, for, for quite, a, quite a lot of years now. So it's, that's also why it's, it's a heavily embedded tool in our, in our package. Um, Here's just a, a quick example of one of the renders done out of Enscape um, that, that we recently submitted for, for a project. Um, it, this is a, a project called Dumac uh, headquarters in, in, in Odense in Denmark. Um, in fact, a fantastic project. You, you should definitely also check that out on, on the website. Um, uh, it's, it's this circular round uh, timber building uh, with this highly complex roof, uh, but it's, it's a really, really uh, beautiful project. Um, then we've also been having a little bit of Lumion in the mix of, of things, but but it has never really uh, kicked off uh, on, on our side, at least. I know a lot of other offices has been using Lumion a lot, but it has never really um, picked up at, at big. Um, we've also also been been testing a lot with with uh, with Twin Motion, or not only testing. We've also been using Twin Motion for for a few projects, but. But again, somehow it never really started to 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 fly. Uh, somehow, um, Lumion nowadays is pretty much sidelined uh, within Big. We don't really use it um, as of as of right now. Um, and I would say Twin Motion is also it's it's not that we don't use it, but it's not really being used that much. Um, and I guess part of the reason for that is also that D five is now coming in and has sort of squeezed nicely into the middle here. Um, and 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 you know I think the reason why D five is 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 important here in the middle of things is that I think it 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 does a lot of uh, stuff um, especially on the animation side uh, that that is just it, it somehow just feels more easy and natural to do uh, than than with with some of the other tools um, and then with all the AI components on top of it, I think it's, it's, it, that's why we, we think right now it's, it's, it's really a, an interesting um, tool, but also an interesting, you could say workflow that you can create and, and do uh, when, when using it. Um, so that's why we, 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 this is sort of our, our render, not the pipeline, because it's not that we always go through D5. Uh, we're only just, as I mentioned, getting started with D5. So we're still in the, in the early days of, of, of rolling it out. Um, but uh, I think we we it's it seems to be a pretty good toolkit having these three in in, in play at the moment. Um, so what is D five uh, for those of you who are completely brand new to to uh, to the tool uh, and have no clue? Uh, D five is a leading uh, real time rendering uh, solution um, or one of the leading ones. Um, maybe I should say it that way. Um, and and. And as mentioned already, it's it's also powered by a lot of AI-driven and cutting-edge technologies in the back, uh, which is again why we uh, we find it uh, interesting as well. Um, and I think personally, as 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 I see it, it, it I think what what's also makes D five great in many ways is that it strikes a great balance between speed and, and quality. Um, and and as I also put it here, there's also just a 
like a very nice and seamless integration between a lot of our favorite design tools and workflows. Um, and, and then it's also user-friendly. Uh, it's maybe not as press play as Enscape is, and that's maybe also why Enscape still has the upper hand when it comes to the very sort of quick and dirty, uh, you know, get something up on the screen and, and walk around. But but it's it's uh, it's still pretty user friendly and easy to 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 go with here as well. It's it's like you don't really have to do much to get going. Um, so so and it's very intuit intuitive as well to use. So so um, yeah. But again, I don't want. I mean, obviously, it's hard with a talk talk like this to to not become sales e. But but I really don't want to sit here and 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 try and make uh, or, or sound like a sales guy because that's not my purpose of today, and 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 it's also not really the necessarily the the bigger purpose of of the talk per se. It, it's it's it. I I sort of just want to show some of the reasoning behind why we have uh, why we have started looking at it and and why we we're starting to implement it. Um, another reason for 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 this is also that that you know as as mentioned before it it supports a lot of of the design platforms we use. Uh, we're obviously heavily uh, Rhino Revit based, so so the fact that it supports those two is 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 a big tick mark for us. Um, but we also use three DS Max, uh, which is also supported, and every now and Blender. Um, so so for us, you know, it ticks. Obviously, a, a big positive as well. I'm not going to go through all the bullet points here. You can you can check those out if you if you watch the recording or um, or um, yeah on the website uh, at the AU website afterwards. But but I think you know um, basically you know it it does a really good job on 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 both architecture, also landscape. Uh, I th actually in a way would say especially on the landscape side because. The amount of assets that that's available, uh, combined with these scatter tools and 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 uh, procedurally uh, generated things you can do as well. Like I think there's just a lot of stuff when it comes to landscaping that that is really um, easy. And I'm sure Jeff will 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 also touch upon a little bit of that because the the example project we have we have lined up is 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 also having a lot of nature into it. Um, and then I, I actually also think it, it does a really really nice job when it comes to interiors and 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 I, what I also find interesting with with uh, with D five is is um, some of these sort of uh, you would say animated things you can put into your scenes as well so you you can add like um, fire and you can add smoke and you can add uh, fog and other things like that that really can help uh, on the mood and the vibe of, of of a scene especially when you when you do the video uh, video. Um, sequences and so on um right so so uh so in a, in a little bit we will jump into the live demo um and 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 here we are obviously gonna as mentioned we're gonna look into how we use it uh and and, and um and before I, I head over to jeff i just want to sort of uh, in a way introduce the project that we have uh, picked for for this live demo today um this is a project we have up in sweden called the biosphere uh it's a one bedroom hotel. Uh, so there is only one room um, and it's in the middle of the forest in up in Lapland in, in, in Sweden. Uh, it's a project we completed back in, in 2019. Um, and essentially the idea for the project is that you, you have this hotel room that is basically completely almost encapsulated by, uh, by, by this swarm of, of birdhouses. Um, all over the all over the sphere um, that that makes this beautiful wooden wooden sphere right in the middle of the forest uh, with the hope that a lot of the, the birds in the uh, in the forest will will actually make use of these birdhouses. Um, here's just a, a quick glimpse of the interiors. Oh, oops, that was a little bit quick. Um, using uh, at least they're coming for the food I, I i assume they also use the houses as well but but at least they come for the food um and here also just a beautiful image of 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 a more snowy scene um so we we've, we've picked this one to show today i would have loved to show some of the more uh, actual work we we do at the moment also with with d5 or in relation to d5 obviously with 
as you can imagine, with with most architectural firms, uh, most of the most of the stuff we do at the moment is on ongoing projects that are not published at this point. Hence, I could not. I tried, uh, but I could not get any of the of the latest and greatest uh, stuff that we're doing to show here today. But um, but I can assure you that we 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 do a lot of uh, cool stuff in the in the in the kitchen these days that we will we will hopefully uh, be able to share with you all at at some point soon. But um, I will hand over to Jeff now and 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 let him uh, take it from here and show you how you can quite quickly build up a scene around this birdhouse project uh, in in D five. Great, thank you, Jens. I'll just go ahead and start sharing my screen. Yeah, I'm stopping here. And I think that was actually the perfect segue and the perfect tee up for you know getting started and developing this this scene, just because it it does feature this like lush landscape as well as this um, exterior, and then we, all those intimate close up shots that I think D five render is really well equipped to handle. And so, as you mentioned earlier, D5 Render is a standalone visualization platform. So what that means is that we provide you with a bunch of different plug and play plugins for your preferred modeling software. So here we have Rhino and we have the D5 Render plugin installed. And so the process of getting this into D5 Render is not too dissimilar from what your current Viz workflows might be. And so for instance, once you have your model set up, all you really need to do is just click on a geometry piece, make sure that it has a material applied. And so the material doesn't really need to be all that fleshed out. It really is just a matter of making sure that it has a material name, which is what D5 Render is picking up on. And D5 Render can also read any like scene or lighting data that you might have in, in Rhino. So if, if you've already spent some time setting up some lights in your Rhino model, as well as some, some camera views, as we can see here, we can also go ahead and import those just by a simple click of a button. And here you can also see that it's the, the actual Enscape views from, from previous mm -hmm. scenes we might have into the next tool, uh, which I also think makes it makes it interesting that you can sort of yeah, reuse those and, and bring them further. Right, exactly. So we're not really trying to replace any current workflows that you might have. We're really just trying to expand on them. And so, for instance, once once you're ready to transfer this over to D5 Render, all you need to click is just this D5 Render button, and it'll automatically import all your geometry, your materials, and any lighting that you might have in here. So the idea is that you might work with two monitors. So you might have your Rhino screen on one monitor and your D5 render screen on the other. So now any modeling changes that I do in Rhino will automatically be updated in real time in D5 render, as you can see here. And so I think that the real add value here is that you can start to get real time feedback on your designs because you can then get to see them in these sort of photorealistic environments. So here is a fully fleshed out scene. And now I can jump back into Rhino and I can continue to do all my design work in Rhino and start to see what those design, uh, design changes might actually look like from within D5 Render, as you can see here. And so one of the other added advantages as Jens mentioned, is just how well equipped D5 Render is at handling large scale geom or complex geometry. So if we take a look back at our Rhino model, you'll see that I really only have my my architectural components. And then here in D5 Render is where I, I went and started to build out my scene by adding all these different uh, nature assets, as well as some like snow and, and seasonality. And so Again, in order to do that, um, all you really need to do is just utilize our asset library. So currently we have close to 14,000 different assets and that'll include different models, material, materials, uh, particle systems, as Jens mentioned, like if you wanna have any fire or, or water features in here, you can do that as well. Um, this new scatter feature, which I think it was really helpful for the development of the scene, which we can cover as well.
And so again, it's, you know, you can utilize any materials that you might've made in, in Rhino and, but you could also go ahead and utilize some of our like high quality. So when it comes to actually building out this scene with all this like lush greenscape, one of the tools that we provide to you is this D5 scatter. Cause again, like providing you with a large asset library is just one part of the solution. I think the, the other part is how do you quickly and efficiently build out your scene without having to manually place every little object one by one. So if I go into my scatter feature here, I'll just go ahead and hide trees. And I'll hide the rest of the trees here as well. And so you'll notice that all of this, all these grass elements here are just part of this one scatter feature. And the way that the scatter feature works is that if I just go ahead and click on it, you'll see that we have this global preset and this content preset. And so you can think of the global preset as more so the patterning and the layout of all these different of nature assets. So for instance, I can go ahead and click on this checkerboard lawn and it'll apply this checkerboard patterning to my landscape here, as you can see here. And now all I really need to do is, you know, for now I'll just, I'll scale this up so that we can take a closer look. But this is all being controlled by just a simple 2D image, a high contrast 2D image that D5 Render is picking up the, the different values on. And so you'll notice that D5 Render went ahead and created two different sub areas. So now I can just click on this initial sub area, hit content preset, and then I can select one of our different content presets here. So I'll do this floral hexagon turf for now, and it'll only apply to this one um, scatter area. So again, pretty quickly, you can start to alter and play around with the scene and how you want the, the layout to happen. So I'll just go back to the initial preset that I had earlier. And so again, just, just pretty sim uh, quickly in like a matter of minutes, you saw me import that Rhino file into D5 render and then utilizing like our asset library and our scatter feature, I can very quickly go ahead and start to populate the scene with different types of assets. And so for the last part of this demo portion, I just wanted to talk about the exporting. So again, like having these beautiful designs and um, renderings here in D5 Render is one thing, but then how do you actually export them and, and get them in front of, you know, other eyeballs? So what you'll do is you'll click on this button here and then you can pretty quickly render out your image or a pano image. And since D5 Render is a, a real-time renderer, that means that the rendering results that you're seeing here are pretty much going to be identical to the, the final rendered image. It'll just be a bit more crisper, a bit sharper. And the rendering speeds will also not take you too long. You know, it'll be done in a matter of, of minutes. And we also allow you to do any video recordings. And so again, like we really wanna templatize every part of the workflow. So when it comes to videos, all you really need to do is just create a new clip, select your starting point location, and then you can go into template. And by clicking on one of these templates, it'll apply that animation to your camera path, as you can see here. So by following this workflow, you can create something that's pretty cinematic and, and ready to be rendered out and presented. And so another part of this demo portion that I, I probably should have prefaced on was that we are recording this through Zoom. So the, the rendering quality that you're seeing here might not be as sharp as, as in my screen, but uh, hopefully the, the results that you're seeing are, are good enough. Um, but yeah, we, thank we, you. We have, some, we have some comparison images afterwards that we, we can show, but, but uh, yeah, we tried to fix the pixelation, but, but it's, it's tricky with Zoom. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, but no. maybe I can also quickly add what you just showed there, I think is also part of, of, of one of the things that we really find interesting with these sort of a, uh, you could almost say like preset uh, template uh, style um, ways you can you can set the cameras to operate and work because uh, it really means that you can very very quickly you know based on a few camera uh, setups uh, mm -hmm. 
And again, these cameras could be something we've done in Enscape. Like the design team might have been sitting in Enscape and, and setting up some cameras they liked when they were in the very early concept uh, sketching uh, phase. Then someone else can take over those cameras and then quite quickly, you know, convert it into a beautiful scene with a lot of, uh, you know, scenery, uh, trees, landscapes, uh, etc. And then based on those cameras, just add some very quick uh, movements and, 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 and in, you know, Almost in a matter of minutes, you can have like a pretty cinematic uh, mm -hmm. video shot. Um, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So again, we really want to make this as, as quick and painless as possible. Um, but yeah, that covers the, the demo portion for this. Um, once, um, you know, for the second part of this demo, I'll be showing you some more of the, the AI features, what I think, which I think are really fascinating. And like, again, like just more so workflows enhancements. Um, so yeah, I'll I'll join you guys in a in a moment. Um, one sec, okay. So five, four, three, two, one. All right. Thank you so much, Jeff. Um, so yeah, here's hey, just a hey, Ian. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, man. Um, no so problem. I'm not I'm not seeing your uh, your screen yet. It just popped in. So oh, you see that? I do. Okay. So just just cool. do me a favor. Uh, my apologies for butting in. Uh, no just give me that countdown one more time, and feel free to start up again. Amazing. Yeah. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. Yeah. So thanks, Jeff. Um, that was really good. And Uh, playing a little trick on us here with, when it comes to the live demoing. Uh, but we tried to put some comparison shots here uh, up next to each other of the of the build project uh, on the right and 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 the uh, D5 uh, render on the on the left. And and obviously there is a difference. And 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 I will also quickly uh, add that, that I you know we we had to do this very last minute. Uh, as I mentioned, my my colleague uh, ended up having to pull out of this uh, talk in in the last minute. So. So Jeff only had a, a very, very few days, uh, if not even like a, a few hours to get the scene uh, up and running and going. Uh, so uh, so kudos uh, for him to, to to get it running in the first place. Uh, I'm, I'm aware that the, the, the trees may not be the exactly correct trees and all that. So so there is a whole bunch of things that we could have we could have further adjusted and done to to get this image to be even more uh, correct. But even with this, you could say very quick uh, turnaround that that Jeff was able to do here. I think we're we're still producing some pretty decent stuff, um, especially uh, if you take into consideration that the the image on the right is is the uh, the real finished project. Um, here again, obviously you, there is a, a little bit of a difference, and you can clearly see that the the one on the left is is computer generated. But again, if we if we would have had a little bit more time and 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 would have tweaked it a little bit more, I'm sure we could have. Have um, gotten even closer, but but I think once you once you get to some of the next ones, you will see that that it is it is it is strikingly close. So so again, this one is is I think it's pretty pretty good uh, for 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 the very short time that Jeff had to to uh, to to actually work this out. Uh, I think it's quite incredible. Um, this one here again, I, we and and the, you know I know the bridge might not look exactly like it uh, it is, but that's that's basically because the design changed for the bridge if, when they build it. It's it's the Rhino model that is off and not not D five. Um, but uh, but I think the the visuals again, I uh, I think it, it it's uh, it's it's pretty good. Again, the trees is it, you know trees uh, could be different and all that, but but like generally, I think it's it's pretty good. And actually, for the for the sake of it here, I actually swapped the images uh, because it's it's pretty hard to see what's the what's the right and wrong one here. Um, so now the D five is actually on the on the right, and and uh, and the real one is on the left, uh, just to confuse the viewer a little bit. Uh, because I think this one is definitely uh, tricky. Um, right. So I want to jump into the to the AI part of things here and 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 also talk a little bit about how we use AI at big how we approach it uh, because I think it's interesting uh, before we jump into the AI section of, 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 of what d5 does in relation to AI 
to sort of frame a little bit uh, our thinking behind it. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, this this uh, ecosystem of, of of tool, this almost like technology explosion uh, that we've seen over the last couple of years, um, and and obviously within the last year or two, uh, we've been seeing all these different AI tools popping up all over the place in this ecosystem, uh, and they you know there's almost like a new one on a weekly basis coming out. Um, which is also why it, it it makes it hard for someone like me and, and others to 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 stay on top of every single one of them. Uh, hence, we 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 obviously have to pick and choose sometimes and and go with the with the ones where we have the the, the best stomach feeling uh, about it. Um, that being said, we do test a whole bunch of them. Uh, I think in the last uh, six months, we've tested uh, definitely more than I think this slide uh, or this information I've put in here is actually a little bit old. It's it's more than that now, but but um, we've been testing a lot of different tools. Um, and I think it was also part of this, and, and as part of some of this research that we also uh, started to stumble upon D5 more and more because D5 is actually one of the few uh you could say uh, software pieces here in this map that actually have started to incorporate ai features directly into their previous offering uh where a lot of the other ai offerings we see on the market they they are more like standalone startup ai firms that are serving a very specific purpose where where i think what's interesting about d5 is that they have already sort of started to incorporate some some ai functionality straight into their tool um, which I think is 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 obviously uh, really really interesting and, and and also why we we think this is really going to change our our way of working. Um, I'm sure most of you are familiar with Midjourney and and uh, and it, this talk here today is not to talk about Midjourney per se, but I think this image or these images here shows quite well how how you know rapidly things have changed. Um, you know, same prompt. Year and a half ago, or more, actually close to two years ago, um, uh, or actually is more than two years ago. Um, but yeah, sorry. So, but but again, it, I think it just really shows like how how quickly these things have have um, have um, increased in quality. Um, and and for us, we've we've been using Midjourney and some of the other image generation tools uh, quite a lot since they first came out. Um, I think we've done in the order of. 40,000 different images by now uh, on our different um, image generation accounts. At Big, we mostly use it for mood boards, uh, for uh, you know getting uh, inspiration and, and getting new ideas and, and, and so on. Um, that's our primary uh, use of it. Um, we have also increasingly started using it for, for things like, as I mentioned uh, earlier, with these um, uh, V-Ray renders I showed, where we, we now we also use it for you know more stupid stuff like like um, clip art that we put into presentations. We uh, yeah, and a number of other things like graphics and graphics for for presentations and and and, and other things. So 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 it's it's also serving uh, uh, you know a purpose outside just the the sheer design part of it. Um, even something like generating, uh, you know, like ideas for how a diagram in a presentation could look like. Um, and we are also increasingly starting to look at, can we actually start to make use of some of these image to video uh, generators? Um, I believe the one you're seeing here was done with the, with the latest uh, runway uh, version. Um, so, so we are really looking at, at a lot of, of that as well. And I think, you know, there's surely some stuff in this video here that you'll see change from from the original uh, geometry, but that might mainly be someone like me uh, who knows the project very well that would pick up on that. This is, by the way, our our Kistefoss project up in in Norway, close to Oslo, uh, where we made this bridge across a river uh, that forms part of this big sculpture park. Uh, so you could say the, the the bridge becomes almost a sculpture in itself and also a an extension to the existing museum. Uh, so a, a project that ticks three boxes instead of one. Um, but yeah, um, uh, I think, you know, I might pick up on, on the details that that something is changing as, as the video uh, gets closer to the building, but for, if, if you mix this into a series of, of, of 
video clips and animations, a client or or someone like who's not so familiar with the project may not notice any difference or any change. And for them, it's just a perfect video that really shows the uh, the story that we that we want to tell. Um, and we actually have recently submitted a a video for a project where we we did use a lot of of image to to video uh, generation for 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 the video clip of of that project. Um, so it, it it's definitely some uh, you know some of these things are definitely here uh, and 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 um, will only get a lot better in the coming years to uh, you know to to work with. Um, so yeah, as mentioned, we have we've done. Uh, uh, I think like forty thousand images uh, since January twenty three. Uh, so that almost equals like twenty. And I sorry, sixty one images per day. Um, I think these numbers actually may be a little bit outdated by now. Um, but we do a lot of research around AI, and we also uh, we're also constantly looking at how can we you know gain more control over our outputs and and more control over the uh, you could say the AI engines and 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 and. Yeah, the output that that it that it provides, um, and 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 then when it, on the sort of more production side of things, we we are definitely uh, using a lot of stuff like like a lot of things like uh, Magnific AI to upscale and enhance images. We're using um, Photoshop uh, Firefly a lot for for you know small quick changes here and there and, and adjustments to images, um, and and this is also why. For us, something like D5 that now has a lot of these AI components drizzled into their tool is 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 making things really really uh, interesting. Um, I think we're, and this is not not just us, but like the the industry in, in general are getting to you know, we're, you can already prompt to 3D as as most of you probably know by now. I don't think we're at the point where we can prompt an entire project out in 3D, uh, 3D, but but at least we're we're definitely going to get there at some point. Uh, and I'm sure the Autodesk guys is is probably already hard working on 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 a lot of AI BIM uh, related stuff. Uh, and for that matter, hopefully, I would would cross my fingers for some AI generated uh, documentation as well in the coming years. Um, but at least this is where we seem to be at the moment. Um, in, in that sort of progression uh, thing. And then I think when, when talking about AI, it's also important to, or at least I, I quite often refer to to sort of all the image stuff as the more sexy AI stuff. And 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 then uh, all the text uh, and all the chat GPT uh, data stuff as the more sort of non-sexy or boring uh, AI. But actually I think some of that more boring stuff is actually some of the most, Maybe maybe the most powerful stuff and and, and where the um, a lot of the focus actually should be. Uh, obviously today we're obviously mostly talking about all the visual aspects, so we're mostly on the sexy AI today. But but I think the the a lot of the non sexy stuff is definitely also uh, worth spending a lot of time on. Um, and I think a big we uh, we've sort of come up with with this. Uh, approach that we, we, we really want to see AI as something that aids our design process and, and not something that drives it. We we, we do not want to become known for being a, a mid-journey architecture firm. Uh, we we, we, we want to sort of drive what we do. We want to we want to maintain our philosophy and, and way of, of designing buildings and pro projects. Um, but we obviously want to leverage AI to the widest extent and, and, and especially where we can see it become used as a tool and, and, and something that really, as, as mentioned, aids, uh, aids our process. Um, and I think this is also where, uh, because D5 have, have made this statement at, at, at some point where they were saying uh, that they believe AI is, a, is not only a tool, uh, and no, sorry, that AI is only a tool uh, and designers are the masters. And I think this this... You could say uh, blends very well with 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 the way we uh, we see it as well. So um, so that's really uh, you know why we think there is a good fit uh, between uh, what they do and what we do. Um, and then you know on touching upon how they came into the picture, it was really uh, when we started realizing these sort of uh, features like uh, AI atmosphere match. You can you can sort of put an um, example our image into it and then get some of the same look and feel into your scene. Uh, AI gener uh, generated material texture maps. Um, 
ultra HD textures, AI generated, uh, and and also this uh, make make things seamless, so you don't get the the seams between um, uh, between textures. I think that's also just something like I I never thought about that as a as being a feature. Uh, But but when I saw it, I was like, that's 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 you know that makes so much sense to to have a feature like that, and and especially with 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 tools like AI AI um, on the market these days. So so you know I, I think it's 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 really uh, well done or, or um, how to say. And then lastly, they are also now incorporating an, an AI enhancer. I I maybe would quickly say that I still think that that something like Magnific probably has a little bit of a better output as of right now, but. The fact that the you know that a firm like D five is now incorporating something similar into their pipeline means that that I don't potentially have to buy both Magnific and D five in the long run um, because that's also one of the things for me as as a you say someone in charge of all the software and all our budgets around software for me having all these different small AI applications that I constantly have to pay subscriptions for and remember passwords for and how many seats do we have here and there and so on like it it The administrative, uh, sorry, administrative side of things when it comes to all these accounts is just completely blowing up to a point where it it, it gets too much. Um, so that's why, from my point of view, as as an administrator of all these softwares, I think getting some of these features built into our existing tools or 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 some of these new tools just makes a lot of sense. Um, So 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 I'm I'm obviously very hopeful to see more of of the of the more established software companies uh, take the same approach. Um, so yeah, here just quickly showing sort of that cycle of of things that you can now do with with some of these uh, D five um, capabilities when it comes to AI. Um, I'm sure Jeff will will show some of it in a second, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take. anything uh, away uh, here. Um, so again, I will hand over to Jeff in a second to to show some of that. I just want to quickly uh, frame the, the project we're going to show now. Uh, so this project is a project we're doing in Kansas. Uh, this is the uh, School of Architecture in, in Kansas. Uh, we're making a, an expansion uh, to, to, uh, to their, um, yeah, the school there. Um, so we're uh, envisioning this uh, Timber building, uh, this cube, maker's cube, um, which will be predominantly made out of, of, of timber on the inside. Uh, so here's just some of the official renders we did for the project uh, recently, um, just to show you what we what we're uh, envisioning. Uh, and we are already into uh, looking at making prototypes for how can we actually put it together and, and, and get all these like complex joints of, of timber to look as, as sleek and, and, and nice as possible. Uh, and as you can imagine, uh, it's going to take some some quite a serious um, uh, wood craftsmanship to get those uh, corners to look uh, completely perfect. Um, but yeah, I'm going to hand it over to Jeff now to, to show a few AI related examples uh, on, on this project here. Great. Thanks again. Uh, let me go ahead. Right. Yeah. So here we have that uh, Kansas campus project. And so, again, we have a whole bundle of AI features within D5 Render. And hopefully these are just meant to, you know, speed up where your workflow, um, get rid of any repetitive steps in your workflow, not really to take away any authorship or design decisions. And so one of those features here is this AI atmosphere match. So all you really need to do is just click on this icon. and upload a reference image. And this could be an image you found online or maybe this, your studio has done in the past. And so if you just wanna go ahead and reflect that same mood into your current project, you'll just upload that reference image, take a... And so again, hopefully this will alleviate any tedious tasks of having to like play around with a bunch of different sliders in your environments and effects tab, just trying to figure out what each little button does. Um, and again, using this method, it's also pretty simple to create studio standards, studio presets, onboard new users, so that, again, you don't have to mess around with all these little hidden features within the environments and effects tab. 
And so here is what that final result looks like. And so as you can see, our AI model was able to pick up that this is a winter scene. So I went ahead and added some um, weathering effects in here. But since it did a go ahead and like play around with all my different settings, I can always go in here and tweak it just a little bit more so that I get that exact look and feel that we were looking at our reference image. And so once we're happy with the results, I'll just go ahead and save this out as a new scene. And I can right click and create a preset. And now that I've created this preset, even though this was a pretty painless process, it's it's now logged in my um, set of presets that I can always go ahead and double click and apply to my scene. And the other AI feature is more closely related to material creation. So if I just go ahead into this view here, you'll see that I have this uh, sculpture piece here. And I can actually use this to create this timber material on my facade. So all I need to do is just click the I key and select this sculpture. And then from here, I'll just upload that base color image. So here you'll notice that this image is pretty low resolution. It's also tiling quite a bit. And that's because I just went ahead and found this from like maybe the manufacturer's like website and they didn't really have any high high res examples. So all I really need to do here is just click on this icon and hit make seamless. And I'll hit okay. And then I can also do this ultra HD texture. And now our AI model will go ahead and upscale this to a, a usable resolution. And so again, rather than having to take my material to a third party software, I can just do this straight from D5 render. And once I'm happy with just how that base image looks, I can go ahead and click on this other icon in order to start to generate my normals, my roughness and my AO. Again, all of this, might have been a bit time consuming in the past, having to take this um, base image to a bunch of different pro um, programs in order to get the final result. And so now that these channels are generated, I can just fine tweak them a little bit more. And then I'll scroll down and play with the, the tiling of this material. And so here is what that final texture looks like. And now that I've created this material, I can also go ahead and save this to my library so that I can you know, share with other colleagues and they can use it in their projects. So again, that's a the pretty, pretty painless workflow in order to create my atmosphere and my materials. And so the other AI features are more closely related very full of like different 3D characters and maybe some nature elements. You know, some of these characters might still look like they're 3D generated. So with this new AI feature, we call our AI enhancer. All you need to do is just render out your image and then they'll show up in our history tab and we'll get this purple icon. So all I need to do is just click on this purple icon and it'll bring our AI enhancer. So from here, I can choose between different levels of upscaling. So I can do, for example, this is my base image. And then this would be the low intensity upscale, the medium intensity, and the high intensity. So I'll just go ahead and zoom in on the low intensity. And you'll see here that it went ahead and added some more facial features to my characters. It worked on my reflections as well as the grass here. And so you'll notice that as, as the nature of AI, the, the more freedom or control you give it, you know, it'll start to make its own decision. So as you can see here, it went ahead and altered my timber material. So in order to bypass that, we we also um, allow you to do a more controlled selection of your, your image. So here I told it to enhance everything but my architecture. So you'll see that the facial features have been updated as well as all the, the nature elements, but it, it's kept my architecture geometry exact to what we were seeing earlier in our base rendering. I think this is this is again one of the, the, the features that we we 
really like about this this new functionality that you can you can do just just that what you just showed there i think that that's that's really uh, really nice Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so again, like this is more so for, for post-production and the other thing at D5 render, and, you know, I think it's something that we resonate with you as well at big is that, you know, yes is more. And so we're always rolling out new AI features. We tend to update D5 render once every three months. So we're, and these are like major feature updates. And so What you're going to look at now is actually a sneak peek at our, our next release, which will be out in a couple of weeks. And so with this release, it's called AI Late Stage. And what you can do is create more stylized filters. So for example, here we have our base rendering. And so with this AI Late Stage, what you can do is you can add a more like watercolor feature or effect, as well as maybe something more um, marker drawing, pencil drawing, maybe it's like a, a model rendering. And so the idea here and why we decided to roll out this feature is because we understand that you might not always have um, a scenario where you might need to present a photorealistic image. Maybe you're in the early design concepts. So again, you don't want to oversell anything. You really want to keep it loose. So again, using these um, filters here, you don't you're not overly committed with any of like the design decisions. So you can just show a, like an early draft of the design concepts. So that's just one example. And we can take a look at, again, just some more watercolor drawings here or effects. And then the other thing that you can do with this AI late stage is also change the time of day. So this could be like a, a nighttime rendering. You could change it to like a autumn scenario as well as you know turning um a rendering from ai sunset to to winter rendering so again all of this that i'm showing you here was all done with just like a simple click of a button you'll just render out your base image and then you can tell it what kind of scenario you want your base image to be in and then um, our ai model will take care of the rest um so again those are just a handful of the AI features that are existing in D5 render right now, but hopefully down the road, we can uh, keep rolling out some more AI features that'll just, you know, help enhance your workflow and get rid of any repetitive tasks that you might have to experience on your day-to-day -day basis right now. And with that, I'll, I'll hand it back to you, gents. Great. Let me take over again here. Uh, do, 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 do. Last section, I guess we're okay on time. Uh, we don't really have much left now, so we should be okay. Let me just get started on this one again here. All right, so five, four, three, two, one. All right. Thank you so much, Jeff. Uh, I think that was super interesting uh, to see. And I think, um, again, as I mentioned earlier, some of these features that were shown here is, and, and also some of the the other ones that you have in the in the toolkit is is, is definitely, I think the, the main reason why we, we got we got uh, we got interested in in, in, in in taking this tool on and and, 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 and sort of take a close look at it. Um, and uh, and I think here is just a, a quick comparison between the uh, the official image from from our website and and what Jeff was able to to do and 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 I'm I'm like if if Jeff had little time for the birdhouse example he had even less time for this one because we literally got this in last minute. Uh, so um, so one thing I actually just realized now by looking at it is that the 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 Rhino model that, that I gave you is actually missing the this timber structure uh, behind the uh, the glass mullions. So so already there, I just realized a last minute uh, hiccup. Anyhow, I, I still think it's it's actually quite a uh, quite impressive um, what you can do in, in such a short time with a with a tool like this. Um, again here. Uh, you know, both images uh, are doing, uh, you know, pretty good. Again, 
I immediately just realized that that uh, that the timber structure is is missing uh, on the on the B five one and on the left. Uh, that is not Jeff's fault. That's my fault. Uh, <laughs> but um, but apart from that, I, I, you know, again, I think uh, I think given the, the the very short amount of time we had to to uh, work on this, I, I think the the, the quality and, and 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 what 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 it's able to come up with is is uh, really really good. Um, so so again. This mixed with all these new AI functionalities is is why uh, we we definitely think this is is becoming a, a very very interesting avenue and, and workflow for us. Um, I will leave it up to you guys to judge whether it's the ultimate workflow. I, I think there may may have been a, a, a marketing person from D five involved in the title of this uh, talk in the first place, but but I do think that there is definitely some some very very interesting uh, components to this whole uh, back and forth on on the AI side and 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 what it sort of enables us to do. Um, so yeah, this is this is really the uh, as, as mentioned earlier that that is really the, the one of the key reasons why we uh, we we have uh, we have come to where we are, uh, especially with, with the D5 team at, at this point. Um, and maybe just to to round it off, because we are getting to the end of this uh, presentation now, uh, I always love to end on these sort of more futuristic looking slides. So uh, the project we have here is is not a, a render done in, in D5. This is, a, this is a couple of years back where we envisioned this uh, floating city uh, for, for the UN. Um, and uh, and and we we we're definitely you know we we very much like to to think a lot about the future. Uh, as I mentioned, Gag is, is is putting a lot of effort into this uh, plan for the planet uh, at the moment. And um, and so so some of these projects is is really you know they may seem very radical and 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 so forth, but but they uh, you know they might not be so far off. Um, so so we've both been looking at could we do potentially floating cities. Um, and a couple of years ago, we also started looking at could we actually uh, design architecture in this in, in space. Um, and, and we're by no means the first architectural company to do this. I actually, I also showed these slides last year, so uh, so uh, at AU last year. So apologies if, if some of you have already seen these, but but uh, I think they're just still uh, valid. Now have a project together with with NASA. Um, to basically be hopefully become the first architects uh, to to uh, build a building on the moon, um, we're by no means the first ones to to come up with with space architecture proposals. Um, but I think what what really makes our project stand out is that that our client is NASA. We're um, we're teamed up with this U.S. three uh, D printing company called Icon, who will be doing all the three D printing with with Moon Dust. Um, and the project is supposed to uh, to sort of come right after the uh, right after the Artemis uh, missions. Um, so our uh, project is part of the uh, what is called the uh, Olympus um, uh, project, which is uh, basically uh, the home of the gods. Uh, gods. So so uh, so um, Artemis and and uh, Apollo was was a couple, and and uh, and hence it was a very fitting name to 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 then. Uh, Call this project, uh, yeah, Olympus. Um, so that's that's what it is, and and uh, and hopefully we will actually uh, potentially see this project become a reality uh, within our lifetime. So I think that's that's just super super exciting. Uh, so so maybe just now we are on this sort of yeah you, know, you could say AI track and talking about future uh, tools and of software and technology. I thought it was just a, a fitting uh, project to end on. So. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for for tuning in and listening to uh, to Jeff and I today and and uh, and what we had to show. Um, and I'm just gonna end on this slide uh, here, and then uh, yeah, we're gonna just say thank you. So uh, that's it. <laughs>